If you happen to be a new general manager or plant manager, I know that you're often brought in to show results that your predecessor was unable to demonstrate. Now, if this happens to be you, there's a chance that you only have 12 months or so, give or take, to visibly demonstrate some kind of progress or you too will become a predecessor. That's serious business, but uh, that's the way it is. My name is Ron Alexander. I am a safety and manufacturing leader, and I have been in the manufacturing sector for over 50 years. During that time, I personally have been an advocate or advocate for and to the best of my ability, I have practiced what's known as servant, excuse me, well, I have practiced what's known as servant leadership. And many of the general managers and plant managers that I've worked with have used this same model. But I am rethinking this. The reason I'm rethinking this is because in the real world, there are people above us who look at our financials monthly, weekly, even daily, they look at our financials. And very often the status quo, the way things have been done in the past, just don't always cut it. And if you're new, and if you've been brought in to replace a, a predecessor, then you know that change has to happen and it has to happen quickly. And the servant leadership model is insufficiently proactive to make this happen. And if you're using the pro, a servant leadership model in this kind of an environment, this is going to be like doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. You may have great ideas, but the people before you had great ideas and the people before them had great ideas. And doing it the same way that they've done it, anywhere else, we would call that insanity. Yet I've seen it happen over and over. But a few years ago, I was working in a facility where we found ourselves in a situation where our safety performance absolutely had to change quickly. Fortunately, it did. What we did was we adopted a construct that engaged our entire plant population in recognizing and correcting safety hazards. And it wasn't just a few people on our management team who worked on this. It was the entire facility, the general manager, the clerks in the office, the people on the floor, everyone participated. We established some metrics also that we reviewed and we shared our progress every 30 days or so. And in less than 90 days, we achieved what was the best safety record in the history of that facility. And that facility had been there for a while. And even better than that, that improved safety performance has remained over two years. And in fact, it became a change, a new safety culture. Now, I didn't realize it at the time, but we had introduced what is known as a transformational strategy. We use what's called trans transformational leadership. We constructed, we found a construct that continually generated a stream of improvements, and we aimed that construct at our hazards until our defined objective was achieved. And as our metrics told us we had successfully addressed one safety hazard, we turned our aim on that system to a different safety hazard and we worked it until that was eliminated. And in less than 90 days, our ultimate objective was reached. And during this process, something totally unexpected happened that I've never seen any other time in my career, but we actually transformed our safety culture. Now, in many respects, transformational leadership is much like servant leadership, but there's that added element of risk and proactive action 
that comes from incorporating a transformational construct that in institutionalizes a stream of improvements. The very name transformational leader implies that the leader understands the need for change and that they have the skill and experience to lead their organization in incorporating change. That's different. The need to be able to rapidly address problems is so obvious in my opinion that you would think that every general manager or plant manager would incorporate transformational strategies and have a system for that. But sadly, that's not the case. In both my personal experience from being in the industry for several decades and in research, I've come to find out that only about 25% of our managers have the skills required to implement a continuous improvement strategy. And now I understand why our leaders have so little success in changing the culture of their organization. They come in with good ideas, they work hard at it, but it just doesn't work. So if you're a leader and coming into an environment where you are expected to lead change, I would like to share some thoughts. They may be obvious to you, but I'm going to say them anyway. Most of the mid-level managers and supervisors and hourly employees in your, plant, in your facility, they were there before you got there. They were there before your predecessor got there, and they were before that predecessor got there. If you want to be successful, you're going to have to bring something new and exciting to the table or it's very likely that you too will become a predecessor. Often, no matter how good your ideas are, and I've seen a lot of good ideas come, they're gonna come in, you're gonna come in and they're gonna look like a flavor of the, excuse me, the next flavor of the month. You've got people in that plant who've been there for decades and there's no telling how many next flavor of the months that they have seen. They come, there's a little flash in the pan and they're gone. And then the status quo comes back. Okay, the status quo is not going to serve you well. There is an element that's not present in servant leadership that I believe that you will need. It's the one that we incorporated to make that change I talked about earlier. That missing ingredient is not technology and it's not vision. You probably have enough of both of those. The missing ingredient is that you have to have a construct that generates overall participation that gets rid of the silos and the, it's not my jobs the stuff in your organization. You get many more minds focusing on a problem than just a few. They call that teamwork. And two, you need to have that construct generate a continuous stream of improvements. Just one improvement isn't gonna change the world. But if you can continually generate those improvements, then you build on what's happened before. And next thing you know, your organization is at the top of the list instead of the bottom of the list. So once these concepts are in place, improvement is improvement follows. And if you do this right, from my experience, you can show measurable progress in less than 90 days. Now, you might ask, what are some of these constructs? Well, there's more than one construct. The biggest construct that I've seen used is called Improvement Kata, AKA Toyota Kata. If you don't know what that is, you can look it up. Uh, I've also used uh, a, a construct called a tend to help program and another construct that kind of indirectly causes improvement I'm sure every one of you has experienced with that's a 5x slash 6x program and I'm sure there are others but those are those are some that I've had personal experience with so whatever construct you use you train everyone you have everyone participate 
and that generates results. As long as you just focus that construct from one problem to the next. So please think about that. There are some links in my description to some of my other videos and to a construct that I personally use uh, that I call power skills. It's one that I teach, but there are others. And there's other related videos there, including uh, my websites where you can find my, uh, my contact information if you want to contact me and talk about some of these things. So there you go. Thank you for your time. You have a great day and best wishes.